Welcome everyone to another episode of the Filipino Genealogy Channel. Before anything else, if you haven't done it yet, kindly click on the subscribe button and the bell beside it so you will always be kept up to date with my channel postings. Today we will talk about one of the most common preoccupations of most Filipinos, politics. But of course, we will talk about politics genealogy style. Let's face it. Even during this COVID pandemic, elections are still going on all over the world. The United States, in fact, is getting very ready for their next presidential elections this coming November. Speaking of U.S. elections, there is a belief in some sectors of the U.S. electorate that the presidential candidate with the most number of traceable royal ancestors wins the election. As seen in this particular diagram, George Bush, for instance, was a relative of Barack Obama, Sarah Palin. Donald Trump, according to one news article, is related to most Icelanders and Danish and Norwegian royalty. There's also an article here from 2001 that says English royals linked to U.S. presidents. Above all, it is believed that the winning candidate has to be a descendant of King John of England. This is known as the most royal candidate theory. Of course, time and time again, this theory has been proven false. However, there is still a semblance of truth to this theory. It has always been known that most of the presidents of the United States were related to each other. In 2012, a young student from California, 12-year-old Bridge Ann Davignon of Salinas, California, created an amazing family tree that connected 42 of the 43 U.S. presidents to one common ancestor, King John of England. Now, King John, also known in history as King John Lackland, is renowned for signing the Magna Carta in 1215, which, as we know, limited the monarch's power and helped form the British Parliament. Young Davignon's research showed that all but one U.S. president, the Dutch-descended Martin Van Buren, were all descendants of John of England. Of course, we do not have as amazing a research as this for our presidents. Still, we can connect them all, together with other important men and women in our history, to each other, whether by blood or marriage or even both. So for our fourth episode, we will begin with part one of our own Presidential Connections episode showing that RP politics is still a family affair. This is our very own version of a family tree connecting all of our presidents. As you will later see, all of our presidents from Emilio Aguinaldo down to Rodrigo Roa Duterte are connected in one way or another. So for part one of this episode, let us see how Emilio Aguinaldo connects to Corazon Aquino, Benigno Aquino III, Fidel Ramos, Ferdinand Marcos, Ramon Magsaysay, and Elpidio Quirino. Along the way, we shall also see how other personalities in the country fit into this web of family relationships. So let us start with Emilio Aguinaldo, the first president of the Philippines. So let's begin with Emilio Aguinaldo, the first president of the Philippines. Emilio Aguinaldo served as president from January 23, 1899 to March 23, 1901. His presidency ended with his capture by the Americans on March 23, 1901 in Palanan, Isabela, which effectively dissolved and ended the First Republic of the Philippines. His first wife 
was Hilaria del Rosario, who is considered today as the first first lady of the land. Now, if we go down in his family tree, we can see that he and Cesar Virata are related. Cesar Virata served as prime minister from 1981 to 1986 under President Ferdinand Marcos. He is Emilio Aguinaldo's first cousin, three generations removed. The daughter of Emilio Aguinaldo, Cristina Aguinaldo, would connect his family to the Conjuanco family through the marriage of Cristina's son, Emilio, to Isabel Conjuanco, daughter of Eduardo Conjuanco. Now, a sister of Isabel, Aurora, was married to Ernesto Lagdemeo, Sr., and whose grandson, Ernesto Lagdemeo III, would marry Georgina Catigbac. Georgina Katigbak, on the other hand, was a great granddaughter of Segunda Katigbak. Now, Segunda Katigbak has a very interesting role in Philippine history. She is known as the first love of the national hero of the Philippines, Jose Rizal. Jose Rizal was only 16 years old when he first fell in love with Segunda. Uh, unfortunately for him, Segunda was already spoken for and would later marry Don Manuel Luz, another prominent family from Lipa, Batangas, where the Katigbaks were also one of the most prominent families. Segunda's brother, Mariano, was the father of Felino, who was the father of Elena, and who was the mother of Maria Elena Katigbak. Maria Elena Katigbak's son, Lucido, would marry Minette Genuino, whose great-grandmother, Albina Trias happened to be the granddaughter of Martin Trias. Martin Trias, on the other hand, was a brother of Mariano Trias. Mariano Trias, though may not be very popular among the early politicians in the Philippines, is considered as the country's first vice president, serving in this capacity during the Republic of Biak Nabato and then later during the Tejeros revolutionary government. Now, let's go back to the Cojuancos again. The Cojuancos, Eduardo Cojuanco, was already mentioned earlier, had a brother, Jose Cojuanco, who also served in the House of Representatives, representing the first district of Tarlac from 1934 to 1946. His daughter was Corazon Cojuanco, who married Senator Ninoy Aquino and Corazon Cojuanco Aquino would later become the first female president of the Philippines and the 11th president if we count starting with Emilio Aguinaldo. Now she served under this capacity from 1986 to 1992. Her son Benigno Simeon Aquino III would also follow in her footsteps and be elected as president in 2010 and served under this capacity until 2016. A brother of Corazon, Pepin Cojuanco, had a daughter, Mikey Cojuanco, who would later marry into the Jaworski family. Her father-in-law, Senator Robert Jaworski, married Evelyn Revilla, who in turn was a daughter of Senator Ramon Revilla. Now, Senator Ramon Revilla had many partners, including Janeline Magsaysay, who was a daughter of Hernaro Magsaysay, another senator of the Philippines, and a brother of former President Ramon Magsaysay Sr., the seventh president of the Republic, serving in 1953 until his untimely death in 1957. Now, President Magsaysay was known as the people's president, the champion of the masses, and champion of democracy. His administration was identified with the credo, those who have less in life should have more in law. Going back to the Aquinos, we can see that Ninoy Aquino, up to his father, Benigno Sr., and grandfather Servillano Aquino was the son of Braulio Aquino. 
A sister of Servillano was Elena Aquino, who would later be the mother of Pasita Gueco. Very interestingly, Pasita Gueco married into the Romualdez family. When she married Daniel Romualdez, she connected the family of her cousin, the Aquino family, with the Romualdez family of Tacloban and Manila. Daniel Romualdez was the son of Miguel Romualdez, who in turn was a brother of Vicente. Vicente had a daughter, Imelda, who would later become first lady of the land. Imelda Romualdez Marcos was the wife of Ferdinand Marcos, 10th president of the Philippines, and served in this capacity from 1965 to 1986. He was also the first president to ever win a re-election when he defeated his opponent, Sergio Osmeña Jr., in 1969, thus breaking the so-called jinx of a second presidency because before him, no other Philippine president was able to win a second term. Imelda came from a political family. His favorite, her favorite brother, Cocoy Romualdez, later became ambassador to the United States and was popular for his so-called adobo diplomacy. Cocoy Romualdez's son, Martin, currently serves as majority leader of the House of Representatives. His wife, Yeda, was a former Binibining Pilipinas International in 1996. Now, if we trace her line, we can see that her mother, the daughter of Andres Atega, had a sister by the name of Maria Atega, who would marry into the Dean de Lara family, and the de Lara family would produce one Ruth de Lara, who married Teofisto Gingona Jr., who was the 11th vice president of the Philippines. Teofisto Gingona was appointed as vice president of the Philippines and secretary of foreign affairs by President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. He has the distinction of being the only vice president who was not nationally elected to the position. Going back to the Romualdez family tree, we can also add another president. Through her husband, Ferdinand, we can see that Ferdinand Marcos was a second cousin of President Fidel Valdez Ramos. Fidel Valdez Ramos, the 12th president of the Philippines, was a hand-picked successor of President Aquino, and he served as president of the Philippines from 1992 to 1998. He was the second cousin of Ferdinand Marcos because his grandmother, Crispina Marcos, was the sister of Fabian Marcos, grandfather of Ferdinand Marcos. Now, the daughter of Ferdinand Marcos and Imelda Romualdez, Aimee Marcos, was married to Tommy Manotok. Tommy Manotok's sister, Patricia, married Ramon Mayuga, who in turn was the son of Simona Lucero, who was the daughter of Senator Santiago Lucero. Simona's sister Gloria had a son, René Monson, who was married to Astrid Besa, tracing down to the Besa family, and then later we come up with Elizabeth Ann Besa, who was the wife of Elpidio Quirino. Now, this is not the president yet. Elpidio Quirino was the son of Constante, in turn the son of Ernesto, and the gra great grandson of Mariano Quirino. Now, Mariano Quirino was a son of President Elpidio Quirino, who actually served first as vice president from 1946 to 1948. Upon the death of the incumbent president at that time, Manuel Rojas, in 1948, Elpidio Quirino succeeded, succeeded to the presidency. Although he won his first full term, he was unable to defeat his opponent in his re-election bid in 1953. During his term of president, his daughter, Victoria Vicky Quirino, served as his official first lady.
So in this first segment, we were able to connect quite a few personalities in Philippine politics. We connected Emilio Aguinaldo to his own collateral descendants, Prime Minister Cesar Virata. Then we connected Emilio Aguinaldo's family with the Kawanko family, which connected us with Vice President Mariano Trias, President Ramon Magsaysay, President Corazon Kohuanko Aquino and her son, President Benigno Simeon Aquino III. Now, through Corazon Aquino, we were also able to connect our tree with the Romualdez family, giving us a connection to Teofisto Gingona, Vice President of the Philippines, and then to President Elpidio Quirino, and directly to former First Lady Imelda Romualdez Marcos, wife of President Ferdinand Marcos. Now, through the Marcos line, we are also able to connect our family tree finally with Fidel Valdez Ramos. So, thank you very much for watching this segment. And in the next segment, please uh, stay tuned. We will be connecting our family tree further with the other presidents and other personalities of our Philippine presidential family tree. Thank you. And once again, please subscribe if you have not yet subscribed to this channel. Thank you for watching. See you soon.